architecture and marine engineering. He has vast experience in the maritime field and has held numerous important positions in shipping and port state control. Under this uh, capacity, he is managing a team of 30 project officers. The unit provides training to EU member states, enlargement, uh, enlargement countries, Paris MOU states and European neighborhood beneficiary countries. It also provides technical, operational and scientific advice and assistance to the European Commission and the member. Mr. George, floor is yours. Thank you in advance. Thank you very much, uh, Captain Mamuka. It's really a pleasure to be back after six years. And I have to say I'm quite impressed by the, the changes I have seen here in Batumi, but also the changes in the Maritime Administration, which uh, shows uh, your commitment towards uh, uh, the goal that you set up uh, seven years ago. So, um, as uh, already said, I come uh, from EMSA, European Maritime Safety Agency, one of the uh, decentralized agencies of, uh, of EU. Uh, EMSA was uh, practically founded uh, uh, on the aftermath of uh, numerous accidents uh, when there was a decision to reinforce at EU level maritime safety and maritime legislation and through uh, our founding regulation back in 2002, EMSA was established. Since then, of course, uh, our founding regulation has been revised numerous times. Uh, the most latest one uh, just almost a year ago with the Coast Guard package. And technical assistance and uh, training is uh, one of our core tasks. We are under Article 2.1 of uh, our founding regulation uh, obliged to provide training activities as well as to develop technical solutions and technical assistance to support the national capacity uh, of uh, member states as well as to provide equal training and technical support uh, to states applying for accession to the EU, to European neighborhood uh, policy beneficiary countries, and of course to countries taking part on the Paris MOU, which extends beyond the EU domain or the European domain, having Russia and Canada as well. But what exactly is technical assistance? What exactly do we do? So uh, we can divide our technical assistance, and it's also linked to uh, the presentations we heard so far, to three main areas. Training activities covering, of course, the areas which fall under the competency of our agency, such as maritime safety, accident investigation, post state control, prevention of uh, pollution from ships, as well as response uh, to any accidents by ships or offshore. Uh, activities, uh, STCW, training of certifi and certification of seafarers, maritime labor convention and other EU and IMO uh, international instruments. We also provide exchange of best practices either through our own guidance notes which are developed by uh, dedicated uh, project officers and I can give some examples on the SULFO directive, the EU legislation uh, going beyond MARPOL Annex 6 with respect to control of uh, sulfur in fuels, port reception facilities, and most recently we have developed best practices on the inventory of hazardous material for the ship recycling regulation and the Hong Kong Convention. We are currently now working on a, uh, a piece of guidance which will address also the industry and it's very much related to the developments in port infrastructure. We are working on LNG guidance for port authorities, uh, how to assess and approve the use of LNG as fuel in ports, doing all the necessary risk assessment and also the necessary infrastructure to ensure uh, safety and security when using LNG as fuel. But we also provide technical solutions, which is uh, very much linked, linked to uh, infrastructure as well. We have our own technical solutions which are offered to member states but also to beneficiary countries which are used by enforcement authorities to uh, ensure uniform implementation of EU and international legislation as well as to enhance uh, cooperation between uh, member states and uh, third countries. These tools uh, are uh, a perfect example of uh, cooperation. FETIS is a tool used by post control officers throughout the EU Russia, Canada, Norway, and Iceland. So it goes far and beyond the EU. That is EU, it's a tool which was designed uh, to support enforcement authorities to implement EU legislation 
but it's going to be soon uh, discussed to be open to accession countries and beneficiary countries of our projects, uh, provided that they align their legislation with the EU legislation, and we're looking forward to the SULFU directive and the PRF regulations. RULCHIC, which is an electronic library where we have all the International Maritime Organization uh, conventions, the ILO, MLC, all the EU maritime legislation and specific folders which uh, either address uh, post control in the Paris MOU domain or the Black Sea MOU or the Med MOU. Rule check is currently used by 80 countries all over the world, not necessarily linked to any EU project. So we provide assistance to the Indian Ocean MOU, to the Caribbean o uh, MOU, uh, and through uh, rule check, everybody has access to the same exact legislation and procedure to implement when inspecting ships. We have developed an e-learning platform, uh, the so-called uh, MAX, uh, Maritime Knowledge Center, where we have uh, e-learning models which are developed by our project officer to address all uh, international and EU legislation, and it's offered also to all beneficiaries uh, of uh, our projects. And of course, Clean CNET, which is currently also being used by uh, beneficiaries in the Black Sea, where satellite images are provided in order to support uh, the identification of potential pollution, but most importantly also the identification of potential pollutants. Now, uh, when it comes to the Black Sea, uh, we are running now a project called uh, Black and Caspian Sea uh, Project, we call it BCC. Uh, the project started on 1st February 2017. EMSA has full delegation and responsibility for the project. It will uh, go up to 2021 for four years. We have uh, 4 million euros planned, which are provided by Digineer. And the project covers both regional, so the Black Sea, and bilateral actions to address beneficiaries' needs, because in some cases, some actions which will be tailor-made, for example, for Georgia, may not fit Ukraine and vice versa. The beneficiaries come both from the Black Sea and the Caspian uh, region, uh, namely Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Iran, Moldova, Turkey, Tur Turkmenistan, and Ukraine. And it covers uh, a large number of technical areas uh, falling within uh, the remit of our agency, such as flag state obligation and responsibilities, port state, VTMIS, protection of the marine environment, including also emergency response activities, human element in maritime safety, starting from ice and code all the way to STCW and MLC, and of course, maritime security for both port and ship. We have challenges, of course, to meet, and uh, we have divided them into three main areas. So maritime safety, of course, uh, is uh, the traditional, let's say, uh, activity of the agency, and we have, of course, the challenge to implement the III code, and in that respect, to support the, non the beneficiary countries in drafting legislation and procedure to bring in line their legislation with the IMO standards. Uh, a big challenge is to provide training for flag state surveyors and post state control officers throughout the, uh, the region and to establish a harmonized approach, and that is why we are proud to say that we are now developing a standard training scheme for flag state surveyors and post state control officers to be implemented throughout the region for all the beneficiaries. It is important to establish uh, a scheme to monitor the fleet performance, but also the classification societies, the ROs, uh, that are uh, delegated to issue statutory certificates on behalf of the beneficiary countries, and that's why we will develop specific trainings on monitoring fleet and ROs performances. We will, of course, uh, do other activities to uh, reinforce the capacity building in the area of maritime safety, including training of accident investigators. We will, of course, provide uh, full access to our tools, rule check and e-learning. We will develop e-learning modules uh, on the request of the beneficiaries. And, of course, we will bring experts from EU member states to share best practices with the beneficiaries, but also equally important uh, to exchange best practices between uh, the countries of the region. When it comes to maritime uh, security, again, as I said, we will try to reinforce the capacity in this area. 
by providing workshops and training uh, and share expertise between beneficiaries and EU member states. We will provide, of course, training to experts, both uh, on the ship side, how to perform uh, security inspection, but most importantly, and with all the developments we see now uh, in port infrastructure, how to assess and uh, certify security uh, in ports. And of course, to approximate legislation and enforcement to the EU standards. And finally, for the protection of the marine environment, um, we heard uh, also this morning that there are a lot of actions ongoing, and one of them is to uh, align uh, the legislation of the regional in, in the region with IMO and EU standard. And this is where we try to play an important role by uh, providing support on drafting legislation, but also training through e-learning and in-house uh, for the environmental uh, legislation. We will uh, reinforce the capacity building in the field of oil spills detection and identification of polluters, providing uh, and exchanging satellite AIS and terrestrial AIS information, as well as uh, clean CNET services, which is already running from the previous project. Sharing and expertise and best practices, organizing uh, joint uh, uh, drills uh, in the region with neighborhood uh, EU member states like we did in the past uh, with Bulgaria and Romania. And uh, of course, we will provide, as I said earlier, access to enforcement tools, in particular for sulfur enforcement and for PRF, provided of course that uh, the beneficiaries uh, will align their legislation to the EU standards, mainly the Sulfur Directive and the PRF Directive. 